So this is Samsung's Z Fold 4 versus Samsung's S23 Ultra. Should you be considering Samsung's flagship affordable or Samsung's flagship regular phone, I guess? Uh, the pricing on these is that the Z Fold 4 starts at around a price of $1,800, but you can easily find it on sale either through a carrier or online through like Amazon or something like that. I've seen it as low as sometimes $1,500, but of course it depends on when there's a sale. You can also look out for trade-in offers and whatnot, whereas the S23 Ultra starts at a price of $1,200, which again, you might be able to get it on a sale either through your carrier, or I've seen it on sale for $1,000 off already. Um, and not to mention how old they are, the Z Fold 4 is definitely on the older side, so on paper, some of the specs may be just a year older, um, versus the S23 Ultra is the most newest once the current one came out this year in 2023. So. Let's see how they compare. As far as the build and design, I think they're overall somewhat similar. Now, of course, it is a foldable device versus a regular device, and we'll get about the differences there. Um, but as far as their overall look and aesthetic to them, I think they're very similar. So obviously, you can see that both of them have a matte glass finish. The S23 Ultra does use Corning Glass Victus 2 versus Victus Plus on the Z Fold 4. I think on paper, Victus 2 is just a little bit stronger or more resistant. Um, and then they will have an aluminum frame, which is glossy. Um, so again, about the same strength. I already do have a couple scratches on my Z Fold 4, so I can foresee the S23 Ultra getting similar scratches if you're not using a case. Um, and they also have a flat finish to that frame. So when you're holding them in your hand, they do feel kind of flat, so it gives them a bit of a good amount of grip. But one thing I don't like of the S23 Ultra with that frame is the way that they kind of built it and designed it in the corners. I understand they're doing this because of the S Pen, so you can fit in the S Pen and also keep in a pretty good battery. Um, the corners are a little bit pointy and uh, uncomfortable in your palm if you're not using a case. Whereas the Z Fold 4, it doesn't have that sharp corner. They have that rounded finish. I think it's kind of like the S23 and S23 Plus. Um, so I kind of prefer the way it feels a bit better in the hand with the Z Fold 4. Yes, it's also a little bit heavier because again, it's a foldable device versus the S23 Ultra. It's just maybe a little bit lighter, but they're both relatively heavy overall. And obviously you can see that both of them have different camera designs. The Z Fold 4 does have an actual camera bump. On top of that, the camera lenses just stick out a little bit versus the S23 Ultra, the camera lenses just stick out out of the back. And of course, because the Z Fold 4 is a foldable, over time, I'd still think the hinge is holding up pretty well. It's still stiff enough to hold its, its uh, angle wherever you put it. Uh, sometimes you will notice that it doesn't seem to hold, um, but it's still overall, I think, still holding up well and strong and smooth for the most part. You do hear a ever so slight sound of creaking. I <laughs> I don't know if it's because there's something in the hinge itself or if it's because of the screen protector because the screen protector is starting to peel off a little bit in the middle. You can start to see this like this coloration, especially if you put it on a white background. So if you're, for example, if you're in the app store, since it's a white background, you can see some kind of like rainbowish uh, look down the, the uh, crease middle. So I think it's the screen protector coming off but don't quote me on that. So that's one of the biggest concerns too with affordable is the durability of the inner display. The hinge itself seems to be holding up pretty well, but the inner display, I still have my own concerns and questions. Um, I haven't had a Fold for more than a year. I had a Z Fold 3, but I did end up trading that phone in um, for the Z Fold 4. And of course I haven't had this for a full year yet. So that's one of the biggest concerns that I, you know, would say I have of a folding device. So I don't fully use this device as my everyday phone. Obviously you can see through my channel that I've been using a lot of devices. So if you're someone who keeps your phones for a long time, hardware durability wise, I would you know be a little bit worried and question it a little bit whether or not this will survive for years. Versus the S23 Ultra, there's no chance or there is a big chance I should say, you'll have this phone for a long time, guaranteed for at least hardware wise. Another thing to keep in mind with the Z Fold 4, with its different form factor, especially with this form factor, it's the Z Fold 4 is just a bit slimmer, almost like a candy bar look versus the S23 Ultra is definitely just a little bit wider and definitely a little bit taller, but accessories. For one, cases. I'm not a huge fan of the way cases are built around folding devices. I understand this is the, probably the best that they can do, but um, I'm not a fan of them. One, 
they're a little bit more pricier than a regular case for a regular device. But two, there's some cases that come in a couple of pieces. So usually it's two pieces where it's the back piece and that usually just slaps on like a regular case, like no problem. But then the front piece, usually front pieces require some kind of an adhesive tape to stick onto the front. Otherwise it'll just keep popping off. And the one thing I don't like about that is, well, yes, cases are meant to be put on and forget about them and, you know, protect your device. But sometimes I just want to take the case off. And, you know, if I do take it off, I take off the adhesive. And that usually means that I can't really put it back on again. I have to repurchase the case or something like that. Or, of course, apply my own adhesive. Um, but so as you can see right now, I have half the case off because I don't want to take this off and have to reapply it or something like that. So it kind of, you know, it's one of those annoying things. And another thing, too, is that not all cases will protect the hinge. Some cases, like I said, come in two pieces and won't protect the hinge. It's only the front piece and the back piece. So that's another annoying thing. And then on top of that, other accessories that are not just cases, like for example, I have this one accessory that it's in my shower. I prop my phone in so I can watch a video, listen to music or something while I'm taking a shower. And this doesn't really fit in that well. I have to take the back piece off. It could be, it would be better if I could take the front piece off because it doesn't really fit well. It's too thick. It's, you know, it's just some accessories aren't gonna fully work perfect with the size size and form factor of the Z Flip 4. But as always, my case picks have been the Samsung, um, what, what is this? I don't even know what kind of case this is. It's some kind of standing case that comes with an S Pen as well. Um, it came free, so that's actually why I'm just using it. And then with the S23 Ultra, it has been the D-Brand grip case. There is a grip case for the Z Fold 4, but that came out a little bit after the phone already came out, so I was already rocking this case, so I kept it. But the D-Brand case, one of my favorite cases out there. It's thick, it's grippy, it's powerful, I don't know. Um, it's a really good case, it's pricey, but still a really good case overall. Now, as far as buttons and ports and extra stuff, um, at the bottom, both of them do have USB-C. Both of them also have dual firing speakers, which I just cannot find a difference between them. I think if you're really picking or being picky, you could say that the S20 Ultra may just have a little bit better bass, but I feel like I said it every single time I talk about speakers with two phones, both of them are really good. Listening to music, watching content, whether it be an actual video or short form content, you'll be more than satisfied with both speakers. The one thing I would keep in mind though is with the Z Fold 4, depending on the orientation you're holding your device, um, sometimes you might be blocking those speakers. So if you have your phone open and you have both speakers covered up by your, by your hands like this, then uh, you might be you know, distorting those speakers. So just keep that in mind when you're using this device. Um, but besides that, the speakers I think are perfectly fine on both of them. Both also have a physical SIM card slot and also have the capability of using eSIM as well. And with connectivity, if I haven't had any issues, no issues with Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or 5G connections, both of them have been working just fine for me. And both devices have the power button and the volume rocker on the one side, which is on the right-hand side. Um, and the volume rocker is over top of the power button. And on the Z Fold 4, it does have the uh, power button also as its fingerprint sensor. So it's a physical fingerprint sensor, which we'll get into a little bit later. Um, but I think the Z Fold 4 is a little bit more ergonomically comfortable because it's just a little bit lower and since the phone is a little bit smaller, uh, it's easier to reach it with no problem. And both of them do have S Pen support. The S23 Ultra obviously has the S Pen built into the device, so it's embedded in there. You can take it out and take notes. Versus the Z Fold 4, you do have to get an external S Pen, so you can either get the case that I have, which has a little module that you can put in that can actually use the S Pen. I've seen a ton of people uh, be able to mod up their case to have the S Pen and the kickstand, that's too much for me because in reality, I don't use the S Pen on either of these devices that much. But there is one thing to keep in mind is that the S Pens do or are different. So on the S23 Ultra, it's your typical S Pen, I guess. Um, it's the S Pen that the tablets use, so you can use your tablet S Pen on the S23 Ultra itself. Versus the Z Fold 4, you have to use a special S Pen that's a Z Fold edition so that it doesn't damage the inside of the screen because it is a more delicate screen. And on top of that, it only works on the inside screen. So even if you took your you know, tablet S Pen and use it on the front cover display, it's not gonna work. Um, so you do have to use a special S Pen and you do have to only, you can only use it on the inside screen. Um, and then it also is a regular S Pen, it's not like a Pro, so it doesn't have the Bluetooth functionality. So with the S23 Ultra, you can do air actions and stuff like that. Um, that does not work on the Z Fold 4 unless you have that Pro S Pen. But besides that, both of them work for taking notes, for taking screenshots. So if you wanna get an S Pen, you have the option with both of them. It just depends on what kind of experience you want. I think it's a bit of a better experience on the Z Fold 4 if you can get by with the fact that you can only use the Pro S Pen or the Z Fold Edition S Pen because you get a slightly bigger screen to be able to take actual 
decent notes. I find it a little bit hard to take notes on a phone like this. It could be great for quick notes and stuff like that, but um, at the same time, you could just type up the notes. So it's kind of up to you to decide what kind of experience you want. And both of them have an IP rating where the S1 Ultra is an IP68, which is water and dust resistant rated, versus the Z4 4 is IPX8, which is just water resistant. So if you get splashed with water, you'll be just fine. But I would be very concerned if you took this out to, I don't know, a construction site. So if you work in construction, where there's a lot of small particles or at the beach or something like that, I'd be very careful. I wouldn't even risk it, but it's totally up to you. So, you know, the S1 Ultra is fine against all that kind of stuff. So as far as displays, the S23 Ultra does have a singular 6.7 inch, 120 hertz, 4040p, dynamic AMOLED, I think a peak of 1750 nits versus the Z Fold 4. It does have two displays. You have the 6.2 inch, 120 hertz, 4040p, dynamic AMOLED, I think a peak of 1200 or so nitage, nits on the front cover. And then you also have a 6.7 inch display that's also 120 hertz, 1440p, dynamic AMOLED, I think also a peak of 1200 nits display on the inside is a flex display as you obviously know because it's a foldable flexible device so as far as the quality both of them are fantastic so watching content scrolling around whatever you do you'll be satisfied on both devices because they're high quality samsung displays they get plenty vivid uh plenty bright enough even though yes on paper the s23 ultra is definitely a bit brighter i still have no issue seeing the z44 outdoors um so yeah Quality wise, both of them are good and they both have the ability to use an eye comfort shield as well. The S1 Ultra does have an enhanced eye comfort shield, which basically further enhances and removes the vividness of the display. So if you set your phone to vivid and then use all these eye comfort shield uh, settings, it will dim down or not dim down. It will take away some of the vividness of the display. Both of them also can switch from vivid to natural if you wanted to do that. But what's gonna be different is the experience of them. So the key thing is gonna be trying to learn and figure out with the Z Fold 4, what things am I gonna do with the front cover display? What things can't I do or feel weird? Or same thing with the inner display. What things can I do on the inner display? Do I wanna do on the inner display? Because one of the biggest things is again, the experience here. So with the S23 Ultra, it's you know your typical slab phone. You do anything and everything on here, typing, texting, uh, watching content, uh, long form content, social media, scrolling around. Every app is gonna work just fine on the S23 Ultra. It's gonna be a normal experience. Yes, big display, um, but still a relatively normal experience. Versus on the Z Fold 4, you kind of have to figure out, like I said, which things you're gonna do on the cover display. Some things I do not like doing on a cover display is typing. I have pretty fat fingers or thumbs, and it's hard to type. It's cramped, to say the least. And if I type on the Z Fold 4, it splits the, the uh, keyboard, depending on what kind of keyboard you have. Um, and it, sometimes it's just, it's too big. You can get like a floating keyboard and, or do that with the settings with the keyboard, but it's just not the same experience in my opinion. So typing is not my favorite when it comes to the Z Fold 4 because it's not the best on the inner display. It's also not the best on the outer cover display. Watching content though, on the other hand, I honestly think it's good on both of them. So whichever display you wanna watch content on, I think it's fine. Yes, you will get, be getting or will be getting black bars on both displays. Depending on the aspect ratio of the video, uh, you will be getting black bars on the top or on the sides if it's on the covered screen. Um, but again, it's a bit of a bigger screen compared to the S23 Ultra, so you do get a slightly better experience. Also, just browsing social media. You could browse you know, everything on the uh, end display or everything outside. You know, It's really gonna be up to you to get and figure out what kind of experience you want. Some apps are just a bit blown out on the inner display. So some apps may not look the prettiest. It's definitely better than it was before because when the Z4, I think three actually, when that was out, there was a lot of apps that were not fully optimized for this bigger look of Android. And then on the cover screen, there are some apps that also cut out some um, of the app itself from side to side. So for example, if like, uh, uh, shorts, some sh um, short form content um, do cut off a little bit of information or of the video itself from the sides. And then of course, you gotta talk about that um, crease that you have down the middle. I personally think it's not that noticeable. You definitely will see it at first. It's uh, noticeable enough for people who haven't really used a foldable device before, but over time you'll definitely get used to it. You can definitely feel it. The display does feel a little bit plastic here compared to the outer cover screen because it's you know natural glass so it does maybe feel a little bit odd at first when you're first using it um, and same thing with the under display of camera it's 
noticeable if you look for it, but if you're not looking for it, you're gonna completely forget that it's there. Um, and versus the S23 Ultra, the only, you know, I guess, weird thing about the build of the display is gonna be the curvedness of the edges. So it's still got a little bit of a curve on the phone itself, and I'm okay with it. I think it feels nice when you're using the back gesture, um, but besides that, installing screen protectors is a bit of a hassle because of that curved display. Um, and sometimes cases will also build a little bit of dust and dirt and particles within the case there. And it also has very minimum bezels and a singular camera cutout on the S23 Ultra. The Z Flip 4 actually also has a small camera cutout on the front cover display as well. Now, as far as lock screen passwords and also biometrics, relatively similar, there are some small differences, but with the lock screen, you get the exact same options. So you have the option of a pin, a character passcode, or also a pattern. And then with biometrics, they both have facial recognition and also have fingerprint sensors, but they're different. So first with the facial recognition, it's 2D recognition on both of them. And I would say they both work pretty well for the most part. Um, there's some scenarios where if you're in a dark situation or if you had a weird angle or in low light, um, sometimes it won't recognize you. Or if your phone's too far away as well, sometimes it won't recognize you. With the Z Fold 4, it's also important to know that you can use both the inner display, under display camera, and also the outer display cover screen camera for the uh, facial recognition. Both of them also have the option of locking your notifications on your lock screen. So until it recognizes your face, it'll unlock your notifications. And also they have the option of jumping right into the home screen or staying on the lock screen. So you can decide from that. Then as far as the fingerprint sensor, the S20 Ultra does have an ultrasonic under display fingerprint sensor versus like I mentioned earlier, a physical fingerprint sensor on the power button of the Z Fold 4. Nine out of 10 times, the S23 Ultra will get in with no problem. There's occasionally some time where it'll miss or you're pressing too fast or not long enough or something like that that may cause some kind of issue. Versus the Z Fold 4, it never misses. In fact, there's sometimes times where I'm just accidentally pressing it and it already unlocks my device without me even trying to. So it's fast, it's reliable, there's nothing wrong with the physical SIM or SIM card physical fingerprint sensor of the Z Fold 4. Uh, there also is a bonus features with it. One, you can have it, or actually both of them can unlock the device with the displays turned off. So as soon as you press your finger on that fingerprint sensor, it'll unlock the device and jump right into the home screen. With the Z Fold 4, it's obviously a lot easier and faster as well because you physically know where to press versus the S23 Ultra. Because it's a black display, you may not know exactly where to press, so you may miss completely and just hear the phone vibrate and tell you, hey, you didn't, that didn't match, um, so you'll have to try again. Um, and also with the Z Fold 4, because it's a physical uh, fingerprint sensor, uh, sensor area, you can physically use it to swipe down as a gesture tool, so you have an option of toggling the setting on that when you sw uh, swipe down from it or on it, it brings down the notifications, which is pretty neat. As far as performance, the Z Fold 4 does have the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 from last year with the Adreno 730 GPU, 12 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM, and then UFS 3.1 storage starting at 256 up to a terabyte versus the S23 Ultra has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 with the Adreno 740 GPU and then what is it, eight or 12, I think, or both, uh, depending on the base model you get or the model you get, um, eight or 12 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM, and then UFS 4.0 storage starting at 256 up to a terabyte of storage. So on paper, the S23 Ultra does have the newer bells and whistles, the newer specs. So in reality, I think both of them are powerful devices on paper. You may see that the S23 Ultra is a little bit more powerful and maybe slightly more efficient as well. Now I will say that the 8 Plus Gen 1 is definitely an improvement on the 8 Gen 1, but um, maybe not as efficient as the S23 Ultra's Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. But like I said, both of them, plenty powerful for your everyday tasks and for a little bit more as well. So if you're just browsing social media, if you're just browsing the internet, watching YouTube, listening to music, you'll be just fine on either devices. If you're doing some gaming, you'll be perfectly fine on both of them as well. The Z4 4 may just get a little bit warmer, but it's not too bad. And the experience is just amazing on the Z4 4. You get a much bigger display, obviously, with that inner display. So for me, because I have a big hand or big hands in general, it just makes it a more comfortable experience. You can still easily game on the S23 Ultra with no problem, but if you have bigger hands or want a more immersive experience, you might want to consider the Z4 4. On top of that, you can also get like a controller or something and prop it up. And again, you get an even more immersive experience because you get a bigger display. Um, you also can just use the cameras for a long time um, and you can also multitask 
I could be if you wanted to on both of them and both of them likely won't have a hiccup maybe every now and then you'll get a hiccup or a delay or some kind of bug in the software but um honestly both of them with the performance they have it's really good if you were running for hours and hours you would expect yourself to have some kind of delay right just like these phones if you're running them for a while you might encounter some kind of hiccup every now and then but besides that i think both of them are very powerful devices. Now, as far as software, it is gonna be Android 13 on both of them and also One UI 5.1 on both of them. And overall, they both have the exact same features for the most part. Again, the experience may be just a little bit different because you do have a portable phone versus a regular phone. But you, again, you get pretty much the same features, same optimization, the same settings and stuff like that. Um, and both of them are very much focused because it's One UI on the one hand friendliness. So if you're using the phone with one hand, it's pretty simple with the One UI because they bring the stuff down to your hands to the lower portion of the screen. So both of them run the same software. So let's talk about each section and see how the experience is just slightly different. So off the lock screen, there's actually not much of a difference here. It's the exact same settings and options. Um, so you have the option of changing up the clock style, up the color or the actual style of the clock. Um, you can also add your own contact information if you wanted to. You can change up the bottom uh, quick access app so if you have, want to change it to an actual app or a different setting or something like that you can easily change it as well you can also change up the way your notifications show up with a banner with an icon or no notifications at all um, and that's pretty much it you get the exact same settings there's not really anything different yet you can do on the z44 or vice versa on the s23 ultra on the home screen again very similar experience like the core stuff is the same but there is one i guess difference because there's it's two displays on the z44 um, so for different customization options, it's the exact same. So you can change up the grid size on both devices, whether it be the inner display or the cover screen on the Z Fold 4. You can stack widgets if you wanted to, so you can, again, free up your pages if you wanted to, so you can uh, stack those widgets and make it look more aesthetically pleasing. You can take the icons away with good luck. You can um, move apps and widgets freely anywhere. Um, so pretty much the exact same options and different things that you can do. But with the Z Fold 4, you, just one thing to keep in mind is that you can mirror the cover screen onto your inner display. So if you set up your cover screen in a certain different way, so if say you have two pages on your cover screen and then you open up your inner display it'll be those two cover displays um, or you can have them separate so that your cover screen is different from your inner display i personally do that just because i think the best way to set it up is to have whatever apps you like to usually just use on the cover screen so for me it's like choosing a song on spotify snapchat my email uh, youtube real quick and stuff like that whatever apps i typically would use on the cover screen leave them on there and then whenever, whatever apps I typically use on the inner display, you know, add them to the home screen of the inner display because I'm on the inner display, so I'll likely want to use those apps. And then you can, you know, customize it differently with the widgets as well as you please. So I personally have to do that. I think it uh, makes more sense for my use cases for how I use the Z Fold 4. And notifications and quick toggles works the exact same way as well. Get notifications, swipe in left, swipe in right, clears them. You also get your access to your brightness slider and also some quick toggles when you just swipe down once. Um, and then the grouping of notifications works the same as well. So if you get a thread of uh, like a social media thread or uh, an event from a sporting event, it'll all get grouped in the same group so you don't get spammed pretty well organized. And then any messages that you get like Snapchat or actual messages will be put at the top. And in the quick toggle section, exact same thing as well. Um, access to your quick toggles which you you press once to turn off and on or hold down to go into the quick settings for it so those sections work pretty much the exact same way then the app drawer again very similar on both of them you have the option to customize your app drawer as you please you can organize each page into whatever page you want it to be so you can make a page into it's like its own folder so for me i have samsung's apps on one page google apps on one page and then i have all the other apps on the other page you can also create folders if you wanted to, so you can even organize it a little bit more. With the S23 Ultra, you know, it's pretty simple. Um, with the Z Fold 4, one thing to keep in mind that I personally find annoying is that if you were to move one app on your app drawer to a different page and then you go into your inner display, um, it won't be the exact same. So you kind of have to customize both, which is kind of annoying, unless you're using folders. If you put an app into a folder or create a folder, that folder will exist on both the app drawer for the cover screen and also the inner display. So I kind of wish they would, maybe it has to do with the setting with the home screen being different. If you mirror, maybe it might be the same, but um, 
maybe that's something that, that they could add for a quick toggle as well. So Samsung, if you can fix that, that'd be great, please. <laughs> and then some additional features that both of them have. Obviously, they're both Samsung devices, so they're both built into the Samsung ecosystem. So they both have uh, Samsung Quick Share, and Google also has their nearby share if you want to use that. They also have RCS, and then the Samsung Find My with SmartThings, and also Google's Find My. Um, and also, they have the ability to connect to other Samsung devices, so like tablets and laptops. Um, one of the coolest things is that you can do what AirPods do, which is auto switching between different devices. So if you have a tablet and a phone, you can you know, switch between them depending on which device is outputting some audio. You can also receive calls and texts from your Samsung tablets if you wanted to. So there's a couple of ways of doing it. There's one way, which is Samsung's um, way of doing it, which you pair it with your Samsung account. Or you can use the newer Google updated messaging app, which basically allows you to connect it via a, a little barcode. So you can only receive messages. You can't receive calls this way. But if you use Samsung's um, account way, then you can receive calls and texts. You also have Samsung Dex on both of them, which allows you to connect your phone to like a monitor or a TV or something. So that you can get this like computer, Windows, Chrome-like interface. It's there if you want to use it. I personally have never really used it. You also have secure folder which basically allows you to hide away these private stuff like work stuff related. You can add apps. Basically it's a folder that hides away some stuff that's secured by your biometrics. And both of them have the Bixby text and call which basically allows you to have Bixby answer the phone for, for you. So if you don't want to talk to someone or you can't actually physically talk to someone, um, you can use Bixby text to call, which basically will you know, transcribe what they're saying to you. And you can respond to them with these either quick answers or um, you can type out a response and send it to them, which is pretty cool. And then lastly, you have the multitasking features and settings. So both of them can force all apps to go into multitasking mode. Both of them can use picture in picture. Both of them can use split screen mode, but the Z Fold 4, because it has that inner display, it's got even more capabilities to use not only split screen mode, but up to three different split screen apps. And then they both also have window mode. So for me, the S23 Ultra, the most I would typically do is use split screen to have YouTube at the top and then another app at the bottom and then browse the app while I'm listening to a YouTube video or just use picture in picture, whichever I'm in the mood for, versus the Z Fold 4, I'm constantly using two full apps at the same time, whether it be again, you'd be YouTube and then another app, or I would even sometimes push it and you do YouTube at the top and then play a game at the bottom. It works best when it's a game that's in landscape mode. If it's a game that's in portrait mode, it doesn't well, look the best for YouTube at least because it's in a smaller section and you just have these black sections. But for a landscape video and then a landscape game, it works flawlessly. You can play a game and you can watch a video and you're living, man. I think this is the best phone for multitasking out there. And the Z Fold 4 also has its flex mode, which basically means that you can kind of use it propped up on its own. So it's its own kickstand type of thing. Um, kind of looks like a mini computer sometimes, but um, it's, it's there if you want to use it. I don't really use it as often anymore because I just prop up my phone with the case that I use because it has a little kickstand built in. Um, but basically, like I said, you prop up your device. You can use it for YouTube. So it's its own kickstand and so you can watch YouTube. Um, also works for the camera. So if you want to prop it up to take a selfie or you do it for a video call or something like that, you can easily do that with the Z Fold 4, which is pretty neat. So you have a ton of different additional features, or not maybe a ton, but some extra bonus features of the Z Fold 4 because it's a foldable device, which is pretty neat. So if you're looking for something that's uh, more niche to what you're doing, so if you're someone who likes to multitask on your phone, then you're gonna love the Z Fold 4 experience. Now, as far as software support, both of them are promised four years of major OS updates and then five years of security updates. The Z Fold 4, like I said, is a little bit older. So it may not be getting as many updates, maybe like by one update, if anything, it's still gonna get, get you a lot of life when it comes to software support. And I usually get maybe one update a month. Sometimes it's a little bit more delayed on the Z Fold 4 because I think they have to you know, make sure it's optimized for this kind of form factor for the Fold version. Um, but for the most part, I think software support will be just fine on both of them. So. Overall, for software, I definitely think it's gonna come down to the experience. You get pretty much the exact same features, but because you get a cover screen and an inner screen and a big inner screen, the, the experience may vary for everyone. So it depends on what kind of experience you're looking for. Now, as far as the battery life, the Z Fold 4 does have a 4,400 milliamp hour battery versus the S23 Ultra that has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So honestly, from my experience, the Z Fold 4, it's okay to good. 
for Z23 Ultra, it's just amazing. So with the Z Fold 4, I get anywhere for at least when I was starting to use it uh, or starting to use it again. I was getting around a day, but then slowly every day I was consuming a little bit more uh, battery. I was draining a little bit faster and I noticed that by the time the end of the week, on the day I was getting roughly 12, 10 hours total of usage out of the phone, which was not that great. Um, so it kind of really depends on what kind of things you do with your phone and also depends on how you're using it. So if you're using the inner display a lot, then obviously you'll be draining the battery a lot more because it's you know taking up a lot more power to, to power up this big inner display. So everyone's usage would definitely vary. I think you might be able to get a whole day out of the Z Fold 4, but um, really depends on your usage versus the S23 Ultra. Regardless of the kind of user you are, I think you'll be fine with the S23 Ultra. You'll definitely be getting a whole day's worth of battery life. I was getting anywhere from 16 to roughly 22 to 24, sometimes a little bit more than 24 hours of total usage with anywhere from four to seven or eight hours of screen on time. The S13 Ultra is just amazing when it comes to battery life. The Z Fold 4, I could have sworn it was better, but it doesn't seem to be as good as I remember it being. So it's okay it, or good. It definitely could be better. As far as charging speeds, again, the S13 Ultra is going to be slightly better here just because it has 45 watts capabilities versus the Z Fold 4 is only 25 watts. So it takes right around an hour and like 15 to 20 minutes to charge up the Z Fold 4 versus S23 Ultra. It takes around an hour-ish or so, maybe an hour and a few more minutes to fully charge the device. So faster on the S23 Ultra. Both of them also have wireless charging and reverse wireless charging if you wanted to use that. As far as the cameras, I'm going to be as basic as I possibly can be. Uh, but with the front cameras, the Z Fold 4 does have a 10 megapixel camera versus a 12 megapixel on the S23 Ultra. And I would say both of them overall looked pretty good. There is a little bit of a difference in their exposure. I feel like the Z Fold 4 looked a little bit more exposed. Um, not overexposed, but just a little bit brighter um, in some areas, like in the shadows and in the darker areas, the uh, shadows looked a little bit brighter. You can definitely see a little bit more detail in those areas. And uh, my skin color was a little bit brighter or lighter as well um but i wouldn't say both of them were close to my natural skin color i would say maybe the s1 was a little bit closer to it and with the z fold 4 you do have the ability to use the back cameras for selfies and when you do that i think the quality just improves a lot more so the biggest thing for me was the bokeh effect it just looked a lot more natural uh, with the background being a bit blurrier without having to use portrait mode compared to the S23 Ultra and compared to the front camera of the Z Fold 4 itself. In low light situations, I used only the front cameras um, and they're both relatively similar. I think for the most part, they were able to bring in a decent amount of light and like okay low light situations. And then when you got to the low low light, when it was darker, um, both of them struggle a little bit because if you do a little bit of movement or, or something like that, it will bring in some noise. It will cause a little bit of distortion and blurriness. Now, as far as video, I think both of them looked overall pretty decent. I honestly, it was far, hard to find a difference here between them. Uh, if anything, I think the S23 Ultra just maybe looks a little bit more vibrant with the colors. Um, but for the most part, I think both of them looked pretty decent overall with the 4K quality. And low light, um, the one thing I noticed was that the S23 Ultra was just maybe a little bit warmer. So it looked a little bit better with my skin color because it made me look a little bit too pale with the front camera. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I think 4K quality uh, cover screen cameras, front facing cameras is overall okay and decent on both of them. And similar to the photos, you have the ability to use the back cameras on the Z Fold 4. So the biggest thing again for me that I noticed is gonna be the quality again looked a little bit better slightly color wise they looked a little bit different with these again the s Ultra just looks a little bit warmer um but the biggest thing for me was the bokeh effect the natural bokeh looked better on the z fold 4 with the back cameras and on top of that you can actually use the ultra wide lens so you can almost get like well obviously a wider uh field of view so it gives you like a vlogging type of style and look to it so if you're someone who likes to record themselves and take vlog type of videos with their phone you're gonna like this on the Z Fold 4 because you get a wider field of view to almost get like a what 13 millimeter or four maybe not that small but or that wide but 14 millimeter type of wide of ultra view. So as far as the back cameras, the Z Fold 4 does have a 50 megapixel wide and a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 10 megapixel telephoto. Versus this one three ultra that has a 200 megapixel wide, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 10 megapixel telephoto, and a 10 megapixel periscope telephoto. So 
what I'm seeing, honestly, is that both of them are very, very similar. Regardless of the situation, I think, like the lighting situation, I think both of them take a very similar shot. And when I'm comparing them and looking at them side by side, it's very hard to find differences. Sometimes I feel like they trade shots back and forth with one photo looking a little bit brighter, one photo looking a little bit darker, some of them look exactly the same. So it's very hard to see a major difference. The only thing that you'll start to notice a big difference in is when you start to zoom in. That's where the 10 megapixel periscope zoom of the, Z, or the S23 Ultra definitely comes into play. Um, but for the most part, I think both photos are very vivid, or not very, very vivid, but just look overall colorful. For the most part, overall sharp, good quality. I don't know, I just think it's pretty equivalent to the kind of photo you're getting out of both devices. Unless, of course, like I said, you're zooming in, then the Z Fold or the S23 Ultra, I keep saying Z Fold, but the S23 Ultra is gonna be the way to go. It just looks a lot sharper once you start zooming in to 10X or beyond because the max you can zoom on the Z Fold 4 is 30X and the max you can zoom on the S23 Ultra is 100X. Even though the 100X isn't the prettiest, but from 10 to 30X, the S23 Ultra definitely takes the win. And the S23 Ultra seems to have a better focus on the ultra wide, so you can get closer to a subject and get like a macro leg shot. On the S23 Ultra versus on the Z Fold 4, it doesn't seem to be able to focus uh, that well when you get too close to something with the ultra wide. And as far as low light situations, I think again, they both trade pretty good blows with each other and somewhat look kind of similar. I'd say that the ultra wide and the telephoto usually is a bit better on the S23 Ultra, looks a bit brighter um, in some areas versus the wide lenses. I think the Z Fold 4 actually looks a bit better. looks a little bit more brighter, like it's bringing in a little bit more light. Um, but for the most part, like I said, it's hard to tell a major, major difference. Um, there's gonna be some shots where I notice that it's using the wide, but it's just cropping in instead of going into the telephoto or something like that. Um, but for the most part, I'd say low light is pretty decent on both of them. So as far as video, both of them can shoot up to 4K. In fact, they both can go up to 8K and the S23 Ultra can go up to 8K 30 FPS, but um, I don't really use 8K, so it's only there if you want it. Um, but as far as the 4K quality and video, again, it's very hard to tell a major difference between them. Maybe just a little bit of a difference in the white balance, so the color just maybe looks a little bit warmer on the S23 Ultra, but besides that, very, very similar in the quality. And I would also say actually that the Z Fold 4 maybe just also a little bit over sharpened. Um, it looks like there's a little bit too much detail that doesn't look as clean looking, if that's a good way of putting it. But um, another thing I noticed is that the S1 Ultra just also looks a little bit more exposed in the darker areas. And so it's getting a little bit more detail in those areas. But again, besides that, if you're not nitpicking and comparing and looking uh, side to side, then you're gonna think that both of them look very similar and very good. Um, one other thing is that the ultra wide obviously can focus on a subject. So if you're close to something with the ultra wide, you can focus better. Um, and then again, once you're zooming in, those telephotos come into play very nicely with the S23 Ultra. Once you get up to 10X with the periscope zoom compared to the digital zoom of the Z Fold 4, it's just no actual true comparison here. The S23 Ultra just looks a lot better. Um, and it can cap out to a max of 20x zoom compared to the Z Fold 4's 12x zoom. So it definitely can't zoom in as far here. Now, as far as low light video, the S23 Ultra, I think, looks a bit better. Um, biggest thing I'm noticing is, for one, again, the white balance is a bit different here. So the S23 Ultra does have a warmer uh, color look to it. Um, and also, it's able to, it looks like, bring in a bit more light from the ultra wide down to the telephoto less noise introduced into the video. So you can definitely see a little bit more detail, more clarity out of the S23 Ultra video. Um, and yeah, just overall, I'd say the S23 Ultra video looks definitely quite a bit better in low light situations. I also took a quick look at their video stabilization modes. And one thing is that you can record up to 1440p on the S23 Ultra versus only 1080p on the Z Fold 4. Um, and then you can use the ultra wide and the wide lens for these modes. And for the most part, I'd say both looked very similar. Again, you can compare the quality and color, but it looks very similar in my opinion. The, the gimbal-like look to it when you're running and stuff like that, both of them looked relatively similar. So 
it's, it's there if you wanna use it. And taking a look at social media, at least for me, I use it for Snapchat. And for the most part, it seems to be taking a very similar shot to what you would get from your uh, actual camera. Both of them can actually also use the ultra wide, the wide and the telephoto. And then the S20 Ultra has the extra te uh, telephoto periscope zoom. So for that, it actually looks pretty decent. And on video, uh, again, it doesn't look awful. It, I can definitely see some compression and some loss in quality, but um, for the most part, I, I think it's still passable. I'd say for the video, it looks a little bit better on the S23 Ultra, but not too much better. It definitely doesn't look as good as its own quality from the camera app. So overall, as far as camera quality, I'd say the Z Fold 4 is very much comparable to the S23 Ultra. The only thing that's missing is that extra periscope zoom. So if you really, really want the extra zoom capabilities, then the S23 Ultra is gonna be the way to go. But otherwise, I think pretty much everyone would be perfectly fine with the Z Fold 4. So at the end of the day, which one should you go out and get? Or I guess a better question should be, should you be considering a foldable device? Honestly, it's definitely gonna depend on what you do on your day-to-day -day basis. If you're someone who just does the traditional stuff, never multitasks on their phone, and just uses a lot of social media, then I would say, no, get the S13 Ultra. You'll be much better off with a traditional phone size and stuff like that. Versus Z Fold 4, if you wanna build new experiences, build a new habit, try out, or someone who actually multitasks on their phone and have always wanted a bigger screen, but don't wanna take a tablet with them, or also someone who games a lot maybe, this would be a fantastic experience for you. But for most everyone else, I would say stick with a traditional phone size. If you're someone who just wants to know, which one's the better device? I have the Z Fold 4 right now, or I'm thinking between these two devices, and I'm just wondering if it's a better phone. Honestly, I think it's slightly, yes, a better phone. So with the S23 Ultra, I think it has great hardware, great software, great performance, great displays, great battery life, and great cameras. So you get a great overall package. With the Z Fold 4, I'd say it has good hardware just because of the durability questions that I personally have. I'm not entirely sure how well it's gonna hold up in the long run, but for the most part, everything else seems pretty good. So I'd give it a good hardware and a great software because it has pretty much the exact same software and it enhances a bit better because of the foldable experience. Um, and then it has great Cameras, in my opinion, is because the only thing you're missing is the periscope telephoto. So for me, I think it's great overall. Great displays, you have the inner display, cover display, both are great quality, amazing displays. Then you have good battery life. The battery life could definitely be better. This is where the improvements, I hope to see better improvements in the next iteration. But um, besides that, that's pretty much it. Um, I definitely still think the S20 is just a little bit of a better device. Fun experience on the Z Fold 4 though. Definitely a fun experience. But besides that, that's been it. Hope you guys enjoyed.